Hello and welcome to module four in this online introduction to mentalization based treatment. So as you can see, today's session is really focusing on tolerating distress and mentalizing emotions. So we may experience some very unpleasant emotions and that's a kind of natural part of life. However, there is a difference between disliking unpleasant emotions, but nevertheless accepting they're there as an inevitable part of our experience in life and trying to ride through them versus experiencing unpleasant emotions as unbearable and needing to get rid of them some way. So we're going to go on to look at the different ways we might try to avoid experiencing distressing emotions. So we're just going to start this module by having a moment's reflection and just if I could invite you to see if you could think about an emotional state or states that you find difficult to deal with. Now, once you've identified one or other emotional states that you struggle with, if you could just have a little think about what you might do to sort of try and alleviate those states, and what might you do to get out of it? So here is a list of some of the common escape methods for avoiding distress um, that some of our service users often describe. It's, it's not an exhaustive list, so you may have other ways you might use to try and escape. But you can see for yourself, if these become routine and common, they can have quite a damaging effect. So whilst they might offer some temporary respite, they have consequences which might be damaging for our lives. So there's often a balance between getting some respite and distraction from emotions and the damaging consequences the ways of getting it can have on us. So here in this slide, it's, it's just, um, again, it's just a few examples of what at times in our groups people have been able to identify some of the beliefs that go uh, alongside um, this idea of having to rid yourself of these emotional states. So this idea that, that, that it's unbearable, that this, this will never stop, that you just got to get rid of it. And it can be very difficult when the emotional states are so high and feeling so overwhelming to hold on to the idea that it will pass. That emotional states, they ebb and flow, um, and difficult emotions are part of life. So this can be very difficult when we have these beliefs um, that are then triggered when we're in these heightened emotional states. How we deal with distress can often be determined by the meaning we ascribe to having distress or discomfort which can affect how we then deal with it. So for example, if we carry with us the belief that we deserve to be punished and each time we experience distress, we tell ourselves that we deserve it, we're going to find it difficult to tolerate it in a constructive way. Here on the slide, there's some other examples um, of, of meanings that can be ascribed to people's distress. You know, things always turn out for the worse. This is how it's meant to be. I can never trust it when things are going well. Other people are always trying to undermine me. They deliberately make me feel this way. And I, I shouldn't have to be going through this. I deserve better. My suffering helps me to help others and to keep doing good. If I suffer, then others don't have to. So that's just a selection of some examples of what people over time in our groups have come up with. But if I invite you now just to have a moment's reflection and just have a think about, you know, what meaning might you ascribe to distress? And how might that then influence you in managing it?
Now, there's no right or wrong when it comes to practicing emotional distress, but we'll go on in a bit to think about some guidelines. Accepting distress. I mean, this is what we're encouraging you um, to do, and it might feel counterintuitive. Kind of goes against your second nature. Because rather than avoid the experience of distress, we're wanting you to try and think about accepting that distress is part of everyone's life and is something we need to learn to tolerate better. You've probably not realised it, but over time you've probably learned to tolerate all sorts of things in life. For example, um, you know, people you don't like, you know, or not getting your own way. So the first steps in accepting distress is to see your feeling and emotions in a different light. As we've seen in previous slides, emotions can be helpful. Emotions and emotion discomfort is a universal experience. And not only this, but emotions are useful for our survival. They're a source of information about what we're encountering. So fear tells us there's a threat and prepares us to deal with the situation. Anger can protect us from injustice or mistreatment. Sadness helps us to keep connected to our lives and other people, telling us what we care about. So another way to look at emotions is that they're not permanent. They're fluid. They ebb and flow and they pass with intensity like a wave. So we're asking you to shift how you think about um, distress. So to carry on thinking about this a bit further, we've returned to Michelle and Layla. And as you can see from this scenario, um, Michelle is accompanying Layla to a family gathering. And it's the first time he's meeting her family. And so during the gathering, Michel finds himself on his own whilst Layla chats to her family. Michel gets his phone out and he starts to send some emotional text messages to Layla, saying things like, I'm really sorry for letting you down. I must be making a bad impression. It's better that I just leave before I spoil everything for you. So I'm going to invite you to spend a few moments just to think about how Michelle might be feeling in this scenario and how he might be managing his distress. So here's a selection of the themes that tend to come out of the group discussions. So there's a wide range of different emotions that Michelle might be feeling in this scenario. But the general consensus is usually that he might be feeling anxious, he might be feeling ignored or overlooked, um, perhaps rejected by Layla and her family, or perhaps he's jealous of, of Layla and the attention that she's getting or paying to her family, feeling left out, maybe feeling angry as a result of this, or hurt, rejected. Now, there's something in the way he writes his text messages um, which might indicate he's feeling inadequate, sort of blaming himself, saying he'd be better if he wasn't there. There's clearly a, a complex range of difficult emotions he might be feeling. Now, of course, in this module, we're breaking things down and you could say that we're simplifying things much of the time in these interpersonal scenarios. But in reality, we're probably feeling uh, um, an array of complex emotions and, and multiple layers of them, but we won't necessarily be aware of them. We're usually only aware of the ones on the surface. So we could be manifesting anger, say, but not showing that underneath we might be feeling quite hurt. So the, the general consensus um, in our group discussions here is that um, Michelle is, is not managing his feelings and distress very well. And so perhaps not fully aware of his emotions or the depths of them. 
and certainly not communicating how are you feeling. So accepting distress. There's no right or wrong way when accepting emotional distress, but there are some guidelines that might help with the process. But essentially, we have to find what works for us. One of the things we think is helpful is to develop this capacity to just watch and observe. To try and take a stance of observing your emotions. I guess this is back to that concept of mentalising really. Paying attention as if we were a third person looking in on ourselves. Whatever we're feeling in the present moment and watch how that might change from intensity from moment to moment or change into a different emotion as time progresses. Secondly, it, it can help if we're able to name or describe the emotional experience we're having and checking in with how the emotions are manifesting in our physical experience. Noticing I can feel those butterflies in my stomach, so I think I'm feeling frightened or anxious. Or I feel tightness in my jaw, so I wonder if I'm feeling quite frustrated or angry. So when we can label those emotions, the next step would be to put them into a context. So I would wonder what is making me feel frightened? And once we've put them into the context, the intensity of the emotion can lessen. Be curious and non-judgmental. Try to ask yourself if you understand what's led you to feeling this way. It's neither good nor bad. It's just what it is. You are feeling what you are feeling right now. We can't change it. We can't change the bad things that have happened to us. But we can try to see if we can understand why we're feeling what we are. Some of us might have grown up or internalised certain messages about feelings which may not help us with this task, trying to understand what we're feeling. If we've grown up being told it's a sign of weakness to show any emotions. Some people find imagery helpful, so clouds in the sky, or, or seeing emotions in the stream going by. Any way you can find to try and tolerate them. Describe a favorite place using all your senses, or imagining a positive figure, someone who was helpful by your side and is helping you. Bringing yourself into the present moment. Emotions can sometimes trigger thought patterns that we either start to imagine the worst case scenario or have memories of terrible things that have happened to us. So bring yourself into the present moment can be helpful using your senses touch, listen to sounds in the environment, focusing on things around you. Common and normal, maybe for an emotion to come back again. So this doesn't mean you failed. It just brings you back to the beginning, to where you've started. Some people might think it's about trying to rid yourself of emotions, but it's not. It's about trying to be with them in a more constructive way. So the task for today and um, following this module is really to just try and to practice some of the techniques that we mentioned, you know, um, in sort of trying to, to notice you know, what happens when maybe you're feeling distressed and then to see what can be tolerated or maybe what those those beliefs or thoughts are that are attached to it. Um, and you might want to um, go online and have a look at things around mindfulness. Um, you know, there's quite a lot out there. We mentioned it previously. But there's all sorts of resources um, like I Love DBT website. That's um, one of the websites where they really focus on, on this distress tolerance, emotional regulation and sort of learning mindfulness techniques.